Hey everyone, good morning. So today we're going to check out Shard Punk Verminfall. A few people mentioned this game in the last two days. It looked interesting, so I figured we'll give it a shot. So apparently this is kind of an XCOM meets Darkest Dungeon kind of deal. We'll see, I haven't played it yet, like at all. This is the first time I'm playing it. So let's see what's going on here. Short Punk is not an easy game. You will run low on resources and you might feel overwhelmed by enemies during your first playthroughs. This is all part of the experience. As you play the game, you will unlock new skills, upgrades and characters that might make the game easier. Okay. Sure. <laughs> well, that's a good start. Right, I mean, I don't exactly have a huge choice here who to bring. Automatons. Alright. Can I check uh, these skills? Yep. Well, we'll just take whoever for now, right? We can always adjust things later. Not like there are a lot of options right now. So, okay, this seems fine. Tutorial level. If enabled, the first mission is an introduction tutorial level. If disabled, the game starts with a regular combat mission. Okay, we can do tutorial, that's fine. Alright, let's do the tutorial. That is what every roguelike game says. <laughs> yeah, it's true, you're not wrong. Okay, so apparently in this game you mostly fight the rats. <laughs> it's some pretty big rats, I assume. It's so big they had to call an exterminator. Us. Okay. The book icon in the top left of the screen allows you to access the codex, right? So this. Your characters have two action points by default. You use AP to perform actions including movement. Moving within the wide range uses one. Okay, so kind of like in XCOM. Basically, exactly like in XCOM. Tiles marked in green and blue are interactable. Green tiles indicate places that can be searched for loot. I like loot. Use search action. Actions are displayed at the bottom. All right. You manage to find some items. They have been added to your common inventory, which is displayed at the top right of the screen. All right. As searching didn't cost any action points, you still have one AP left. Use it to move to the highlighted tile. All right. Rats. <laughs> yep. Some pretty big rats. Vermin approaching. Select the shoot action. With the action selected, you can switch through targets using Tab or QE keys. You can also click on the rat head icons or on enemies themselves and kill one of the rats. Alright. Yeah, so kind of like in XCOM. Since this is the tutorial, I wonder if you are scripted to always hit. <laughs> that might be the case. Great shot. You have one AP left. Use it to shoot another enemy. Note that you can also execute an action by pressing space or enter or by tapping the action shortcut key, right? Yeah, I wonder if you can miss twice here in the tutorial. Is the volume good, by the way? The remaining enemy managed to hit you. Note that melee attacks in short punk always hit their target. Due to the shots you've taken, your weapon's hit is now maxed out and it can't shoot normally. You can see your weapon's hit bar in the lower left. Right over here. When a weapon is overheated, you can still perform a shot, but it's riskier. As you can see, overheated shots deal more damage, but have a chance to damage your character. Let's keep using it for now. Select and perform the vent action instead. Venting a weapon reduces its hit level to zero. You can now shoot the remaining enemy without a risk of backfire. Alright. Well done, vent the weapon again. What if I like to live dangerously? Okay. Plus one stress. <laughs> What's this, darkest dungeon? You've encountered a ranged enemy. And right now, you're exposed. Your character is not behind cover. 
exposed or flanked characters have yellow shields displayed above them, right? Different map elements can provide partial or full cover displayed, right? You can see that the rad shotgunner is behind partial cover. Who decided to give rads shotguns? That was clearly a bad idea. The better the cover, the harder it is to hit the target, right? When you point to a movement target, you can see the cover types that adjacent elements provide. If some of the shields are yellow, it means you'll be flanked, right? Yeah, that's a pretty big rat. Thanks to the high cover, the enemy had the less chance of hitting you. Now it's time to flank them. Holding the Alt key will show you the potential hit rates coming from the highlighted location. Yellow percentage values mean that the target will be flanked. Right? Still 10% chance to miss, I'm just saying. You scored a critical hit. Critical shots deal more damage. Just to make it clear, a critical shot chance is not related to flanking. Also, the rat has dropped something, as a green highlight has appeared. Go and pick it up. Use the action to pick up items, just like surge action, it doesn't cost any AP. Okay. You found a steam pack. Steam packs are items that are usable in combat. Every character has their own inventory of combat items. You can see it in the lower right part of the screen. You can also see total number of combat items of every character you control at the top. So here, steam packs can be used to heal your characters. Right? The steam pack has temporarily healed your character's hit points. As you can see, the healed HP are displayed in a different color. HP healed in combat will be lost after the combat ends. You will have the means to take care of that later. Okay. Your character can set up reaction overwatch shots, which are triggered during the enemy's turn. Oh good, so we can have overwatch party in this game too. Fire at an enemy that moves within your line of sight. If your chance to hit is above or equal to 40%, will be triggered as many times as the current number of action points. Okay. That's like better overwatch than in XCOM, I'm just saying. Your overwatch reaction shot the trigger only once, despite having two charges. Why is that? Your weapon only had one hit point left when you used the overwatch action. That's why the character was not able to perform more shots. Alright. Well, clearly he has to try harder. You might have noticed that your character was gaining stress points on multiple occasions. Stress is one of the character stats that affects gameplay. When maxed, it can cause your characters to panic or receive a negative trait. Okay. Stress points. Stress levels. Nine or more. They receive smaller percent to hit bonus and a defense penalty. Okay. If you have a nine or less, you get a percentage to hit bonus. Okay. More rats. These rats have set up overwatch reactions. They will fire at you when you get too close. Note that your movement path preview displays an overwatch reaction warning icon, showing where you'll enter the enemy's overwatch range. Okay. <laughs> Try to run towards cover. Hmm. Well, if you insist. Alright. They were probably like scripted to miss, because this is the tutorial. 
That was lucky. The enemies missed all their attacks. Uh-huh. Note that this was done for... <laughs> yep, see, I knew it. I knew it. Search this location for supplies. Oh, this location. Okay. Oh, grenade. Good. So this game has explosives too. All right, let's throw a grenade. This will show them. Move to the highlighted location. All right. Characters can swap combat items when they stand next to each other. Move next to the other character. Click on the backpack icon located in the lower right to open the inventory. Uh, there are two... Transfer two grenades from one character to another by clicking on the grenade icon. Right? Good job. Passing combat items just like picking them up does not cost AP. You now have more characters under your control. You can switch active character in the same way you switch targets, so tab, obviously. The game will open up more from now on, and you'll gain access to more character actions. Remember that your goal is not to kill as many enemies as possible, your goal is to escape the level. Why not both? Try getting your characters to safety, good luck. Alright? Yeah, I mean, why not both? We can run away and also kill rats. Okay, so that's it for the tutorial, I think. So where are we going exactly? And there's still quite a bit left. Nothing found. What do you mean nothing found? Okay, what do we have here? Ground slam, heal, grenade, fusion core bolt shot, hunker down. Okay. Katana slash, overwatch. Quick shot, okay. Nothing found. But well, clearly there was something there. Oh, hi, more rats. All right. Medical supplies, scrap. New tactics discovered, looting spree. Search for loot at least three times in a single turn. Reward. Looting is more effective for two turns, okay. You have just uncovered a combat tactic that you can use to your advantage. There are multiple combat tactics waiting to be discovered. Check the codex for details, okay? Well, this should be fun. They can move quite a lot. On a 78%. Okay, then. So what's the chance to do damage to yourself here? Oh, 95% chance of forced self-damage. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too much. 95%. Just a little bit too much. But hey, you can still try for that 5%. Oh, wow, I almost got killed here, actually. That's not good. Adrenaline rush. Use Steam Pack to restore health for yourself or someone with 1 HP. Plus 1 action point for the person healed. Okay. Alright. That was not enough. Right, so melee attacks cannot miss. The highlighted area around the enemy represents possible locations where the attack will be delivered from. Okay. You execute melee attacks by selecting a tile inside the highlighted area. Right. There you go. Won't quite kill the other one. Don't die on me, bro. Okay, got it. I'm a little bit low on health here. Alright, more loot. Plus one steam pack. So what do we have here? Medical supplies. 
for the supplies, steam pack, and this is personal inventory. Yeah, I need to heal myself. That's better. <laughs> heal that can miss. <laughs> yeah, let's maybe not have that. Let's not have that. I would prefer to not miss with a heal. Okay, where are we going exactly? Here, I think. All right. Covering fire. Togo Overwatch next to an overwatching ally. Characters in Overwatch get plus 20% to hit. Okay, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. So that's like Giga Overwatch, basically. <laughs> that's the true Overwatch party. Okay. How's it going? I heard you have a vermin problem. Okay. Plus one fusion core. Yes, apparently we are. Escape the bunker. You have found your first fusion core. Fusion cores are combat items that have many uses. You can use fusion cores to deal massive damage to your enemies, revive your characters, or speed up the opening of bunkers. Consult the codex for more details. If you skip reading the codex until now, it is recommended to at least read about fusion cores. Automatons are controlled in the same way other characters are. If you lost your automaton, you lost the game. Okay. Your automaton's HP goes to zero. It's not an instant game over. You can revive it using fusion core. Right. Fusion cores are combat items you will find on your journey. You can use them to immediately unlock a bunker, which allows a fast escape, deal massive armor piercing damage to multiple enemies, revive your downed units. Okay. Let's go then. Oh yeah, right. I guess this guy should not be scouting ahead. <laughs> because you literally lose if he goes down. A supply crate. Upgrade parts inside. Supply crates are the only place where you can obtain an important resource, upgrade parts. They can be used outside combat to upgrade your gear. Supply crates can only be opened by an automaton. Tiles that only automatons can interact with are highlighted in blue. Okay. Uh, Overwatch just in case something shows up. Oh, yep, rats. Just one. And too far away. Zero percent. If there's an upgrade station present on the map, consider using it. It's the only way to level up your automaton, okay? Well, there it is. Upgrade parts. I guess this is where we're going. Will he move towards us? Yep. Yeah, still 95% chance to hit. All right, well, let's use this thing then. That takes two turns, apparently. Right, so what's this? Ground slam. Slam the ground with your heavy weapon. It ignores cover and always hits. The AP cost depends on the movement distance to the target location. Right, interesting. I don't want them to flank me after I do this. I guess I can just move here and flank him. Uh, this is fine, though. Well, I guess the goal here is to leave, so... Let's just try Overwatch. Nice. Nice. 
he will overwatch too. Hey, works for me. So what do we do with this bunker exit? In order to finish the command phase, you need to open the bunker door. The door can be opened using a fusion core or without it. The second option takes longer, but allows you to keep the fusion core for later. Okay. Bridge bunker door, unlock bunker door. It will take five turns. That's quite a lot, but all right. Well, I guess we're going to defend until then. Let's check the loot. Nothing. Hey! That's not nice. Not sure if I want to take like a 30% shot. That probably won't do much. But alright. Yeah, that was not going to do much. Will he just keep shooting from over there? Yeah, apparently. I mean, we can just wait five turns. Or I could charge him. And there's the upgrade, good. Yeah, I could just wait five turns. Seeing how the goal is not necessary to kill everything. Heck, I can hunker down. Now he's moving. Okay, so we baited him into moving towards us. Yeah, but now his friends are coming too. Okay, okay. Not like that. Not like that at all. Seventy three percent. Yeah, that's not enough damage yet. Chop and blast. Hit an enemy with a melee and range the attack in a single turn. The enemy is stunned. Oh, nice. Okay. That might work. Got it. Nice. Medical supplies. Enter a weapon support mode. All weapons in the area will not gain hit when being fired and will gain 15% to hit and plus one to max damage. The unit is unable to move when in this mode. Interesting. Okay. Nice shot. Still need to kill this rat on the left. And we should be able to leave soon. Two more turns. Got it. Okay, well, we're almost done. One turn left, basically. Right, hold on, I can just kill it. It's fine. Unless I miss a flanking attack, which, you know, I might. <laughs> we're going to miss a shot like this eventually. It's gonna happen. Got it. Are we there yet? There we go. It's open. By completing in-game achievements, you are able to collect unlock points. You can use these unlock points to unlock new characters, skills and upgrades. Alright? Sounds good. Uh, there's still some loot around here. Or not. Not sure if it's actually useful picking up any of these things before we leave. Alright, get out. Yeah, before more rats join the party. Okay, done. You managed to hide in the bunker and close the reinforced door from the inside. You are safe for a few hours. Now it's time to rest and suit up. After completing a mission, you can level up your characters. You are also rewarded with a team skill point after every mission, which you can use to purchase new team-wide upgrades. Okay. After you level up your characters, you will be able to advance to the shelter phase. Close this message to continue. Right. So, let's see. 
New level. What do we have here? Other party members lose 1 to 3 stress and gain 1 to 10% to hit and 1 to 5 to defense for the next combat. Post the weapon in a boosted state, allowing the character to fire up to 2 free shots this turn. Okay, well, that's definitely very good. Yep, I'm taking that. That's very, very good. Find the 3 to 4 random supplies. Okay, weapon boost. That's definitely very good. So next, what do you have? Spend some time on practicing your accuracy. You will receive plus 10% to hit the during next combat. Number of overwatch reaction shots increased by one. Okay. Overwatch reaction shots may now cause critical damage. Gain plus 15% to hit if you did not move last turn. Right. Well, I like an extra overwatch shot. Let's grab that. Okay. Next. When activated, the first two successful katana kills this turn refund two, up to two action points. Okay. Plus one dashing range. Repairing automatons in combat does not cost a fusion core. That sounds pretty useful. That sounds very useful, actually. Spend the time sharpening your katana. You will gain plus two damage for melee attacks during the next combat. Okay, this sounds very useful. Let's grab mechanic. Anything else? Unlocks available. Oh, right, I can unlock uh, anything I want. New characters. The only automaton that has the ability to attack enemies. It has a few powerful area of effect actions at its disposal. Sounds fun. This unit is capable of healing more than one ally at once. Okay. Such healing does not require a steam pack. Okay. <laughs> Mentally unstable. Shotgun. Sniper. Equipped with a new generation of the combat suit. Despite all the trouble surrounding her, she maintains a positive attitude. Okay. Heavy weapon. Chainsaw integrated with his heavy weapon. Okay, that sounds fun. Weapon upgrade unlocks. Adds a stun shot action that deals no damage but can stun the target. Okay. As a chance that all action points will get refunded after a shot. Grants free weapon vents during every combat. That sounds pretty good. Increases the cell capacity and reduces the weapon's overheat chance. Adds armor shredding damage. Adds armor piercing damage. Adds extra armor points to the automaton. Okay. Increased healing of automatons during the shelter phase. Increases the number of action points during the shelter phase. Adds a free action to temporarily boost the movement range of characters. Reduces the time necessary for the bunker door to open. HP bonuses. Stress reducing skills used in a shelter reduce more stress. Well, I can only get one unlock. It's kind of a tough one. I kind of want to unlock the chainsaw man. <laughs> yeah, this guy here. That sounds pretty nice. Okay, what the heck, let's get the chainsaw man. You can't go wrong with a chainsaw, right? Okay, so we got that. Right, team skills. We got one point available. Team skills affect every party member. Let's see what we got here. A stress reducing skills in shelter reduce more stress. Grenades deal 3 to 6 damage instead of the default 3 to 5. Grenades cannot be used in stun mode yet. For every 10 enemies they kill, a character loses 2 stress points. Plus 1 AP for every character during the shelter phase. Okay. Provides a free combat action that grants an extra action point to the character who uses it. One use per combat. I like that. Breaching the bunker door takes four turns instead of five. All right, I'm going to grab extra effort here. Done. Anything else? I think that's it. Oh yeah, uh, the bot. What can we get on you? Stun grenade. Okay, sounds useful. Forces all enemies to target this unit during their next turn. I'm going to grab the stun grenade. Yep. Sounds good to me. Okay, now I think we're done.
Jo, min tal så tar jag att man tar till det Imperial Palace before the vermin overrun this part of the city. Sadly, the closest bridge has been destroyed. You will need to take a longer route. Okay. This is the shelter phase. Here you can rest and prepare for the next encounter. There's a common pool of shelter AP that's shared between every character. By default, you get two AP for every character. You can switch the active character in the same way as in combat. You can see the actions available for the active character at the bottom of the screen. Some actions can be performed by any character, while others are character specific. Okay. Craft grenade. An action's AP cost is displayed near its description. Some actions require resources in order to be performed. An action's resource cost is displayed next to its AP cost. Use shelter actions to heal your characters, reduce their stress, buff them up before next combat, and craft combat items. If you found any upgrade parts during combat, you can use them in shelter to upgrade your weapons and automaton. Okay. Every weapon has four upgrade slots that can hold one modification. Automatons have two upgrade slots. Spending an upgrade part allows you to add a modification to a slot. To add a modification, select a character, pick a slot, and then use install modification button. Okay? Weapon modifications can be upgraded, but each upgrade costs one upgrade part more. So upgrading to level 2 costs 2, upgrading to level 3 costs 3. You can always remove a modification completely and receive a full refund. Remember, modifications can only be changed in the shelter. Oh, okay. You can select the modification, makes sense. So accuracy, damage, that's locked. Right. Probably accuracy. What good is damage if you don't hit? Alright, let's grab aim. And one more. Probably aim again on somebody else. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. What do we have here? Search the crates. 1 AP. Distribute food. Craft a steam pack. Craft a grenade, sharpen katana, okay, we can do that. I guess there's not a whole lot I can do other than search the crates. The active character will have up to 4 stress points removed. Increases the active character's critical chance by 4%, okay. Right, I have 11 here, that's quite a lot. 7. Okay, that's two more points. Heal self. There. This guy is the most damaged. And I guess that's that. I guess that's it. Yeah, melee definitely seems very good because it can't miss. Anything that can't miss is always very good. There's a reason I always prioritize things that are granted to hit in XCOM 2. Uh, okay, hold on. Remaining food supplies. Okay. Characters with food assigned will regenerate 1 HP and receive a dodge chance bonus if they're at full health. Okay. At the end of the shelter phase, you select your next destination. Your goal is to reach the final location of the chapter. By selecting a location, you can see its description along with its unique traits that affect combat, right? Longer distance. It will take more time to reach the exit. Fewer vermin. Fewer enemies are present at this location and the reinforcements appear more slowly. Grenades have a chance of malfunctioning and stunning the enemies instead of dealing damage. Special loot. A stash of military supplies should be present here. Special encounter. A special encounter with an extra reward awaits you here. Okay. It sounds fun. We should probably do this. Sounds like it would be harder, but hey, extra reward and extra loot. You can't go wrong with that, right? Okay, what the heck? Let's do this. 
You need to distribute all combat items to your characters before starting the next mission. Non-combat items do not have to be distributed. But that's going to be the end of this video, so thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And just as a reminder, I also stream live on Twitch, so if you'd like to catch me there, follow me at twitch.tv slash And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.